Hi. Um, my name is Joanna Trowbridge, and I am working on an assignment in my class, uh, CCU um, Old Testament Introduction, uh, BIB 101A, and it's Professor Aaron Bahadorian. It is December 13th of 2020. And this is my first of two Old Testament theme blogs. This first, or not blog, vlogs. This first uh, vlog is on the two most interesting themes that weave through the Old Testament. There's five themes in the Old Testament. Creation, God's sovereignty, the greatness of Yahweh, his kingship, or kingship and idolatry. All of these are extremely interesting and have extreme purpose in how the Bible reflects to its readers the whole story of who God is and what our purpose is in God's existence. Um, the two most interesting themes to me are creation and the greatness of Yahweh. Now, that's currently my two most interesting themes. Uh, as I continue to read and grow and things uh, keep, uh, continue to capture my attention, I am for sure that these themes may change and, and evolve for me just like uh, our relationships with, with, uh, with God, Christ is. And in the creation theme lecture one um, uh, in CCU's Old Testament introduction session four class um, entitled major themes in the Old Testament theology the heart of the Old Testament the, the speaker captured my attention when he said that there are other aspects of creation when we think of creation we think of Genesis, the first book of the Bible where God created everything. However, um, the speakers meant that creation's not just in the first two chapters of Genesis, but that it, the entire story or Bible is bound up by creation from Genesis to Revelation. So the first book of Genesis uh, and the last book of the Bible being Revelation so being the binding what holds the whole story together is creation um, the beginning of creation and the end um, the new creation the uh, the speaker referred to it as bookends uh, I thought that was really cool and um, um, quite eye-opening to, to think of it that way. So in Genesis 1 and 2, God creates. And he just doesn't create this, that, and a few things. He creates literally everything um, that we know in life. Everything in existence. Um, and much more that we have yet to... To... Uh, to find and maybe never will probably never will the title itself means Genesis um, the title of Genesis itself means beginnings uh, so we can presume just from the title that something new is about to happen um, God does not just create some things uh, um, which I already said that um, he creates everything that we know. Um, I mean, to think that he creates everything that we, or he has created, and will continue to create everything that we see, that we can touch, we can hear, and we can feel, um, or explore. And then there's so much more. We're, uh, that's just, uh, the greatness of God. Um, my other theme that 
I jumped into that's just part of the greatness of God for me but anyway God just doesn't stop <coughs> excuse me in Genesis he continues to create mankind through man through us all of us different in our own way but created by God John through a dream that God sends him in the book of Revelation says um, in chapter 4 verse 11 worthy are you our Lord and God to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they existed and were created again God's greatness the greatness of Yahweh is proven right there in his in this verse talking about creation but nothing would exist there would be nothing without God and that right there just shows how awesome and great Yahweh is Revelation 21 explains the new creation so God destroys the earth as we know it and makes all things new and uh, Revelation 21 5 and 6 says and he who was seated on the throne said behold I'm making all things new also he said write this down for these words are trustworthy and true and he said to me it is done from the spring of the water oh wait excuse me and then it is done i am the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end to the thirsty i will give from the spring of the water of life without payment again that's revelation 21 5 and 6. so we will have the pleasure of the new heaven and the new earth um, when god sees fit to make that happen so the greatness of God, and we've touched a little bit on that, just even talking about creation um, and how awesome uh, he is, but he's not awesome just because he made us and gave us life. Um, the speaker in lecture one also said something um, to the effect that God is consistent in his covenant because he is great not because the people are great um, this really greatly um, spoke to me because pastors and teachers tend to build the people up as God's children you know that we're so special because God created us um, because he loves us rather than teaching us that he loves us because we are his creation you, you know God is love so the fact that he loves us is a given in my mind um, First Chronicles 16 25 says for great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and he is to be feared above all gods um, that's first 16 25 uh, the second part of the scripture is super interesting to me because it speaks of the fear of God above all gods whereas all other gods to me I think are pretty much all in eminent object objects that are not to be feared um, they're not living um, so why should we fear these things um, and would they even exist if God hadn't allowed it um, of course not <laughs> I suppose it's the fact that from what I can think of 
um, I, I cannot think of anything other than inanimate objects uh, that people have made into gods. I um, mean, I guess there are other people that people worship, um, but again, they have no power, so there should be no fear of them um, over the one that gave you an existence. Not just life, but an existence. Um, um, so the fear of God is not necessarily the same type of fear that gives a person nightmares, um, but the fear, or the type of fear that brings forth reverence and awe. Um, First Samuel twelve twenty two says, For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great namesake, because it has pleased the Lord to make you a people for himself. Um, that's um, the English Standard Version. Um, all the all the scripture I've shared tonight is from the English Standard Version. So just because the character of who God is spelled out to be in scripture um, should be comforting to us. Um, God was pleased to make us a people for himself. We know because it's spelled out in creation in Genesis 1 and 2 several times when he says that it is good or it is very good. God shows his greatness and how sovereign he is, yet he is continually pursuing his people and saving them from themselves. Um, without a doubt, so true. To me, that is greatness in and of itself. I don't know anyone who could do the same other than God himself. So constantly throughout scripture, I mean in the entire book of the Bible, but I mean even especially in the Old Testament, um, creation is plays a huge part in um, the, the entire book of the Old Testament. Um, and the greatness of Yahweh always chasing us down, always bringing us out of the pit and uh, finding a way to, to save us is pretty awesome. That's the end of the first part of this vlog. Bye.